I want you to hear how the Lord confirmed the message I was to bring by what Peter said. It was only a minute and a half, and he shared exactly a perfect intro to what I was supposed to speak about. Listen to this. Trials, tribulations, friction, all the above. Listen to how he explained what God laid on his heart during the service. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 3, and it says that we glory in our tribulation, and through tribulation, perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope, and you know, the hope doesn't disappoint. And it's been really ministering to me and to others uh, about the fact that, that you cannot, like the very first thing a lot of people like, gloss over is the fact that you, gotta, you have to glory in your tribulation, or else you cannot persevere. And that's really important. That's why a lot of people continue to go on and on again in the same cycle because they still are in there in that dark cloud, you know, in that tribulation. But you have to glory in it. You have to give God glory in your tribulation so that you can persevere. And when you start to persevere, right, and when you start to, like, say that you can, you can do it, that you can go through it, you know, that you start to build the characters the character of God, which is the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, peace, patience, joy, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All those things are what God is wanting to grow us because it's fruit. It has to grow in the way that it grows is it gets watered by tribulation. And and when you get to that place where you, you can deal with things with the fruit of the Spirit, then you don't need to think about what you're going through, instead you think about the hope, the hope that doesn't fail, the hope that doesn't disappoint. Even in the little things, to just take a step back and look and, and see that maybe this is just, you know, something that I can give glory to God and even though I'm struggling, I give glory to God so that I can see through it. And now I have the hope. And so then I build up that character, I build up that desire, I build up the perseverance and I can go through it with God. I love it, Peter. Yeah. Here we go. We are going to read Psalms 57. Now, a lot of times what I want to share with you before I read this is something similar to what we said at the home, at the ministry. Some of the hardest things to deal with in life <laughs> is interpersonal relationships Human to human. <laughs> people get offended. People get hurt. People get angry for whatever reason. Sometimes it's misunderstanding or poor communication or lack of wisdom or words said the wrong way that hit a sore spot or whatever. But the bottom line is when we keep God in, a, in the forefront of our mind, we cannot lose we can only learn and grow from every experience, whether it be fair or unfair, whether it be demonic or just natural human frailty. Now listen to this. I'm going to read this because I feel like what God is saying is some of you are hurting. Some of you are going through uh, uh, things that was imposed upon you by something that someone else did, said, decided, whatever the case may be. And it comes across to you as an attack. It comes across as somebody coming against you, which is not always the case. Sometimes God wants you to see what's inside of you. You ever stand there and watch as you squeeze glue out of a tube or watch toothpaste as you squeeze it. If you take the lid off, the lid being the Holy Spirit, <laughs> that just came to me just now, and you squeeze that tube, what's inside of that tube is going to come out. And God oftentimes removes the lid so that you can see what's coming out of you. Ooh, 
I just got that just now, y'all. I didn't even have anything like that on my mind. That just came. I'm tripping off of that one. That's an analogy straight from God. Wow. So when you are squeezing, when life squeezes on you, when you feel like you're like you're being squeezed and pressured on and pressed upon and imposed upon and, and pressure is coming to you from all sides, which is what happens with a tube. That comes from pressure. You apply pressure and what's inside will come out if the lid is not on. So we must always be filled with the Holy Spirit because the power of God's spirit working in us will cap that bad boy and will make us stop and think and check ourselves before we allow Jack to come out the box because what's inside will come out. Now, let's read Psalms 57. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for that one. Okay, here we are. Mm, mm, mm. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto the Most High, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Mm, let me stop with that word truth for a second. Pat's two cents. When I think about how Jesus talks about truth, he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Do you know there are times when you have to go through an issue with someone? in order for God to tell you the truth about yourself? Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And then when you look at it, you say, oh, I played a part in that problem too. It's what I did, what I said, what I didn't do, what I didn't offer that caused them to be offended. So now I have to go back and ask God for more wisdom so that I learn to be slow to speak and swift to hear. And when you acknowledge God in all your ways, you'd be surprised how many misunderstandings can be eliminated, how many hurt feelings cannot even happen. They can actually be canceled out because you kept the cat on top of that situation, the cap being the Holy Spirit, the cap being praying to God so that you can acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. See, when God directs your path, he directs your thoughts, he directs your motives, he directs everything about you so that whatever comes out of you is edifying. And if, perchance, Satan tries to twist that and tie it up in knots and cause friction. You can see through it because the cap is in control, not your emotions. Amen. So there are no hard feelings. Why? Because you have more understanding. Why? Because you acknowledge God in all your ways. All right. Now, let's keep reading. <laughs> Wow. Okay. My soul, verse three, verse two, wait, yeah, verse, th verse four, sorry. <laughs> My soul is among lions and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of, of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their teeth a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit for me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Now, before I go any further on this, listen to this. 
there are, let's say, three degrees of, or three areas where these problems can be interpersonal relationships. One, you're wrong. Two, they're wrong. Three, both of you are wrong. And then let me add the four. Nobody's wrong. But it's our perception that determines how we respond. Amen. All right. Yeah, I just had a situation this week and it was really eye opening. And I was like, wow, look at the part I played in that problem. So you have to learn and you have to grow so that you're not holding uh, bad feelings. You're not looking at them through eyes of, uh, let's say, how the demons, the, the Bible says the devil is an accuser of the brethren. You don't want to join in with the devil? No. Oh, you don't want to accuse your brethren of anything. Let God be the judge. You just determine, Lord, what part did I play in that problem, if any? But at least ask. That's all. Just ask. Even if you can't see anything you could have done. I could see areas when I worked at the hair salon. Let me share this real quick. And I only tell these stories so you can see, not look at me, just look at the situation, the interpersonal relationships. When I worked at the hair salon, it was really crazy how I would get offended by some of the things the owner would say. But the owner was strictly giving me words of correction. Now, I may not have liked her approach. I may not have liked her tone. I may not have liked how or where she gave me that word of correction. But one thing I can say, my mentor, Gladys Jackson, Pastor Gladys Jackson taught me, however it comes to you, however well-pleasing or however full of disdain, whatever, however it's given to you with, with hot sauce or with sugar, however it's given, no matter how right or wrong their delivery, no matter how right or wrong their motive, whatever, the bottom line is your reaction to it. Get the truth out of it. That's what you do. You prayerfully get the truth out of it. Why? Because you will grow as you follow on to know the things God is trying to show you, you will grow in leaps and bounds if you keep that cap on. Hmm. Keep that lid on it. Keep the lid on it. And let God teach you some things. Let God show you some things. If you're willing to learn, if you're willing to look, if you're willing to See it through the eyes of truth and admit to the areas where you fall short. Amen? All right. So not every enemy is an enemy. Sometimes it's the enemy, the invisible enemy, trying to cause friction between two close friends or family members or church members or 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 co-workers but the bottom line is remember you are to grow from it you hear me i'm looking at you like this because i'm trying to make it sink in that's the holy ghost job so let me get back to what i'm supposed to do all right let's go to <clears throat> psalms 60 which one lord Timothy chapter 3. 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy chapter 3. Okay, here we go. 2nd Timothy chapter 3. Mm. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. This is starting at verse 1. 
For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. You will find that there may be people who live right under your roof. There may be people who work in the same office you work in. There may be people who ride in the same carpool. Whatever the case may be, the neighbor that lives across the street, next door, upstairs or downstairs from you. But the thing that you have to understand is when there is friction, there needs to be communication. We need to iron this thing out because there's a reason for the friction. There's a reason for the annoyances. There's a reason for the offenses. You hear what I'm saying? There's even a reason for the insults. I remember a young lady told me a while back, I'd say about maybe two years ago, she said, I just realized what the problem was. There's a movie I saw, and it's funny because when I watched the movie that she was referring to, the character I watched, I thought of her and the reactions to that character from the other characters that played her family members reminded me of her family and how they react to her. So it was crazy that she came out with that same revelation. She said, uh, the movie where, I'm just going to describe it. I can't think of the name of it. But the movie where uh, one of the sisters, uh, a family member, uh, you know, was older and they were having, they always had Thanksgiving dinners together. And this one sister annoyed everybody. Why did she annoy them? She loved flashing her money. Now, I'm not saying that was what reminded me of this person. What reminded me was the position, the position and the reaction to her and her intentions and how they were misinterpreted because of her position, her financial status, her professional status. You hear what I'm saying? The way she, her whole carriage was that of almost a woman of privilege. And the rest of the family was more down to earth. But she wasn't trying to be a snob. She wasn't trying to be sedity. But that's the way they read her. Why? Insecurities, whatever. It's a whole lot of reasons why people read things into people that they don't really know, like they think they know. We don't even know ourselves. So remember that only God knows us in ways that we don't even have a clue. So I'm, I'm looking at this character and I'm thinking about how sister number two thinks that sister number one, let's call her um, uh, Miss Thang. Let's call her Miss Thang. I'm just painting the scenario. So Miss Thang is strutting her stuff. Miss Thang makes money. Miss Thang's got the car the clothes, the, the business, the bucks. She's got it all. And she's got the looks too, y'all. Now, the other ones are looking, all the family is looking at her. Oh, here you go again. You're always bragging. Now, why would they think she's bragging unless they are slightly jealous of, of what she's got? Now, you, you see what I'm saying? Interpersonal relationships, People can get their feelings hurt. So the one that the uh, Miss Thang is being hurt all the time because they're attacking her and, and accusing her of feeling a certain way, thinking a certain way, acting a certain way. They're accusing her of motives. In other words, they're casting judgment. In the meantime, she's impatient with them. Because she has been able to do A, B, C, D, and E. Why can't you? 
why are you blaming me? You know, you could do the same thing. What's up with you? So <clears throat> interpersonal relationships can hit so many crossfires because of all the intricacies of everybody's perceptions. Isn't that crazy? I remember when my father and I, it's another example, we went to a, a carnival, whatever it was. I don't know if it was the World's Fair. But anyway, we went through this house called the 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 leaning house, tilted house, whatever they called it. And we were standing in line and everything was level. And when we got inside, they had all these illusions of the floor shrinking and going down and leaning. And boy, all the visuals were so crazy that we had to get out of there. My father took my hand and rushed me through the crowd and we just got on out because it was making us dizzy. The perception felt like the house was about to fall on its side. The floor was about to sink in and visually it was, uh, it was nauseating. It was a physical response to a visual um, effect, to a visual effect. It was an effect, it wasn't a reality. But because of the way they had everything set up, the angles, the everything, it gave you the vi the visual effect of the house sinking, the house falling. You almost felt like you were about to fall, but you were walking on level ground. That was the crazy part. So my point is perception can make life a lot harder. That's why you have to acknowledge God in all your ways so he can direct your path so he can direct your thoughts so he can direct your emotions through the power of his holy spirit so he can direct your reactions your perceptions everything your ways he can direct your your path that's everything in your path that's everything in your life everything in your fiber can be directed by the power of the holy spirit and life does not have to be so painful or so difficult if you look at it through the eyes of god through the eyes of his holy spirit that caps you and keeps you in check keeps your feelings in check your thoughts in check amen all right <clears throat> excuse me so let me keep reading <laughs> wow all right where did i stop oh my goodness okay having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away on that one, what came to my mind is there are people that claim to be born again Christians. They can be right up under your roof. They can be right next door. They can work with you side by side. And they're always talking about God and his power and his goodness and his this and his that. But you do one thing, boy, and boy, they'll lamb blast you in a minute. Now, in public, they may be sweet as pie, but in private, they'll cuss you out. They'll ream you up one side, down the other, and then go everywhere they can to talk about you behind their backs to the folks that will listen. So from such turn away, those are the kind that those are not what you call friends. Even family members, you gotta handle them with a long handled spoon, baby. Because if you get too close, they can be like a spitting snake. Psst. Psst. That tongue comes out and out comes the venom right in your eyes, aimed for everything in you to hurt you, to harm you. Because there's something about you, here we go with the dynamics again, that they're either jealous of or they resent because they see that you have something, that little something. You got an edge on them in their own perception. You got something that they feel like they ought to have. Hmm, how come they don't have it? What's up with you? What makes you so special? So there are a lot of different reasons why people will come at you and attack you. 
They will hate you. They will love you in public. Oh, you're just so wonderful. Oh, you're so nice. Oh, I thank you, thank you, thank you. But in private, that's when the daggers come out. That's when the looks, the glares, and the stares, and the words, and the cutting remarks. And you're wondering, what is this about? What did I do to you? And it can go on for years. And unless God takes takes a light, a bright light, a searchlight, and exposes that bad boy to both of you, only one of you may come out growing from it. While the other one, God will eventually remove from the scene. Hmm? He will do that. He will judge that whole situation. But you have to be patient and wait on the Lord. God will tell you what to do or where to go. Mm -hmm. Whether it is right there in your immediate family or co-worker. I knew a lady who had, who had rings of talents around her supervisor. Her supervisor was always criticizing everything she did. I need you to do more of this. I need you. Why didn't you do? I told you to do so and so. No, she didn't, but she said she did. And the memo proved she didn't tell her to do so and so. But the funny part was every time she sent her stuff, the, the person that was constantly under attack could see all of the the typographical errors, the pronounce the I mean the uh, grammar, the punctuations, the 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 run on sentences, the the words that weren't even in the dictionary. Uh oh, <laughs> I mean this woman was constantly on her. But here was the thing: the one she was attacking that could see all of her errors, but not saying anything was way more intelligent, way more astute, more highly skilled, way more polished and poised. She could have run circles around her doing her job, but she loved what she was doing. So she stayed in her lane while her supervisor just gave her all kind of mess. She just wreaked havoc in her life until God said, ding, time, you're out. And God removed that supervisor. Do you see what I'm saying? So there are times when you have to bide your time and see what God's going to do with the situation. Because God will have his way in the world when. That's word right there. He will have his way in the world when. So don't you fear. Don't you fret. Write it out. And see what you can learn from it. See how you will grow from it. See, some of you are growing by forgiving and forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. And you're like, how? why is it always me that has to be the one forgiving? Why is it always me having to be the one to show mercy to people who don't even respect me, who don't, who have contempt for me, who constantly accuse me of doing things I didn't do? Why do I have to be the one? Because you're going to be the one that God uses down the road. That's why. While the other one is still struggling, running around, chasing their tail in the same spot, 10, 15, 25 years down the road, you'll be so far beyond them. Why? Because you allow God to use that lid to keep you in check. That's why. And you sat at his feet and learned from his word. You learn through the preached word. You learn by being in his presence and having his Holy Spirit reveal things to you. You learn through obedience. When you didn't want to forgive, when you didn't feel like you should be the one doing the forgiving, you forgave anyway. Why? Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive, neither will God forgive you. And forgiveness is not for you. It's, I mean, it's not for them. It's for you. You're not letting them off the hook by forgiving them. They still have to answer to God. You're letting yourself off of their hook by forgiving them. You're freeing yourself up. 
So however you go through these tribulations, however you go through these trials, that's the determining factor on how you come out on the other side and how soon. A lot of times it even determines how long it lasts by your reactions, by your willingness or unwillingness to obey the way God said, handle this or handle that. Hmm? Sometimes the, 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 the biggest response, the most impacting response can be your silence. Mm. Mm -hmm. You seal your lips and let God do the talking. And when God talks, everybody sees it. Everybody hears it. Everybody knows. So don't sit up there and fight to defend yourself. You can explain yourself, sure, because that's communication. But don't fight to defend yourself. Let God be your defense. Amen? So don't let these trials bring you down. Because if you continue to praise God, to give God the glory, if you continue to thank God for everything you're going to get out of it, it won't last that long. And on top of that, you will be growing in leaps and bounds. You'll get more understanding. You'll get more love filled up in your heart. You will learn to be more patient and, and you will be able to, to get more insight when you're dealing with people in all their vicissitudes. Amen. Don't we want to grow? Let's grow together in love now. It's got to be in love. Because if it's not in love, somebody's amiss, somebody's in the wrong place. Keep that lid on. Grow in love so that when pressure comes, the only thing that comes out of you is God's love, God's mercy, understanding, patience, joy, peace, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you're full of the Holy Spirit and not full of yourself. God bless you. Amen. I don't think I silenced you guys. What? What? Yeah, I didn't silence you. Oh, so, I silenced myself. Okay, yeah. It was so quiet, I forgot to yeah. silence you. So that worked out yeah. anyway. Okay, great. 